Hey, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Hi there. Wow. Oh my gosh, everybody's here. What's happening? Wow, it's just happening all so fast. All of a sudden, I was doing stuff in my apartment and I went, it's 11.08. It's time to party. I can't wait. I get so excited. I just, I just love it. I love these magnets and I love these magnets and I love that you're here and I love that I'm here and I hope that Mama Grace, she's downstairs. She was watching Family Feud. We had a, a Family Feud, um, what would you call it? Marathon. They were on all, he's, he's so funny. Oh my goodness. I would love to have Steve. I just think he's so funny. And there was this woman on today and his family, I think they were on three times. 89 year old she was funny she's like ah, I'm all she was all talking to everybody and everything yep marathon and i it, whoa 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 so loud jenna turn down your volume on your phone dim all the lights sweet darling i'm editing the privacy and now it's public and that's done and now i'm editing the privacy on this one and that's public and that's done and now we are like a very popular there's one comment. I think it's Patty. Is that Patty? William D. Hello, Julie. Hello, Patty. My loyal three. Grace makes the loyal four, but these three, like, you know, Grace is there all the time. I'm so happy my mom is here. I'm so happy. I am. I'm thrilled for that. <sighs> What's going on? What's happening? Who's here? Who is, who really is here? There are eight people here right now. Do I know all of you? I don't think so. My name is Jenna. This is 1111 with Jenna. I am here every day at 1111 11 a.m. and every night at 1111 11 p.m. Eastern time. So when I'm in, I think we figured it out. When I'm in Norway, it'll be 511 a.m., 511 p.m. The 511 p.m. will be easy. 511 a.m. probably in the beginning will be easy because I'll be jet lagged and I'll be like, whoa, Norway. Okay, cool. But whenever that happens, it happens. I'm learning a new song. I'm learning three songs. I've been hired by separate people to learn some songs for them. Uh-oh, check it out now, Funk's old brother. There are 11 of you here right now. Yay! Still, through the whole song. This box right now. This box. Who are you gonna call right now? I started this about a month ago. Whenever there are eleven people on the show, I I have to. Well, I do that sometimes, but I always play eleven eleven with Jenna just because it's such a cool song. Thanks, Dave. Love. I know, I know, I know. It's just so cool. Um, so see this box? Well, okay, so I'm here every day, every night, and I'm also on YouTube. There are 970 plus shows on YouTube because next Friday, although we were going to have a big old bash, wait, is it next Thursday? I'm going to be flying on the 1,000th, day but but not in the morning I'll, I'll do the 11 11 in the car probably and um and maybe i'll be doing the 8 11 11 11 in a bus on a bus going over the golden gate bridge california open the golden gate yes yes can you tell i'm excited but this box contains a ring that i purchased because I like to, like you guys support me and my art, I support people and their art. And Carly, Carla Neri Jason made this ring. I saw it online. She said, what do you guys think of this ring? I said, I think it needs to go on my finger. But I don't know if it fits. So tomorrow morning, Carla will be my guest because Alex is not feeling so great. I just wanted to get that in there. Alex is kind of chilling. And... Carla is, is in Connecticut, 
and she's going to be my guest tomorrow. And we're going to have a couple of trivia questions. And we're also going to be opening this box. Do you know how hard it is for me not to open this box and put this ring on my finger to see if it fits? If it fits, I keep it. If it doesn't fit, perhaps one of you would like this ring. But I digress because there are 13 of you here right now. Who is here? Do I know all of you? Are you guys lurking? Lurkers, lurkers identify and unmute yourself and please anyone that's watching the show if you have never watched the show before i am here every day every night and i invite everyone who even comes near here to be a guest on my show because everybody has a story so tomorrow morning carla neary jason and i will open this box and then tomorrow night is poetry glam if you read poetry if you write poetry if you love poetry come check out the show Tomorrow night, 11, 11, right here. Monday morning, we meander. People pop on. We just kind of hang out. Monday night, we do meditation. Tuesday morning, Patty Loman. We talk food and we laugh a lot. Tuesday night, Dr. Andrew Rader, acupuncturist, hypnotherapist to the stars. Wednesday morning, we walk. Wednesday night is community. People come on we hang out. Thursday morning, Michael Keel. He's a nurse. He's very cool. He's a radio guy. He's a Marine. He's at the bomb, you know. Thursday nights, conversations with the creatives. I have people on and we talk. And the third Thursday, usually, of each month, we have Corona Roki. What do we have? Coming this. Th but it's not because I will be on a bus, probably. And then Friday morning, my cousin Armando comes on and we talk about food and desserts, and it's really fun and family and anyone can jump on there and friday night is display and c-h-e-r share yes do you know share anyone that's here that i don't know do you know share we're trying to get share on the show i'm i know it's going to happen share jennifer aniston um angelica houston i want her on the show too and then saturday morning is one more saturday morning with jeff metzger and next weekend jeff is going to jump into the ocean for us right <laughs> no how cool is that i don't know I, layla may jump in after him but then saturday night has been the same cool groovy fun i don't even it's just it's just what i do on saturday nights is i get to hang out on saturday night you guys hang out it is one more saturday night with ladies and gentlemen Gary Lambert. I just want it to just open. What up, what up, what up? Well, hey. Hi. Little, uh, yes. little, Oakland, little Oakland represent here. I see that. Yeah. Mama's Royal Cafe. There's there's kind of a there's kind of a thematic uh, thread about this uh, today, but uh, before I forget, you know, I I told you of my very brief but very intimate relationship with Cher, but unfortunately we lost you know gu guarding the little her little changing booth on stage at the Oakland Coliseum. But you tell it just tell people because not because there are eleven people here right now, and I would play eleven eleven with Jenna right now, but since you just got on, I'm not going to do it. But please tell okay. your Cher story because you have one. Yes. Yes, well, during during my years working security at, at Bill Graham Presents, I had some intriguing experiences. Uh, once I had to guard, sit guard outside Madonna's dressing room, which was sheer hell. Not because of Madonna, but because... Was that at the Coliseum? <clears throat> that was the Coliseum, in like Coliseum. Like 89? The Blonde Ambition Tour, I think it I was. I was there. Yeah. 90, something like that, yeah. Yeah, I was I, there. I, yeah, well... Um, great show, by the way. I I didn't work her dressing room the next night um, because uh, it was a miserable experience the first night. Because of the surrounding little army of bureaucrats around Madonna, who were just horrible, horrible people. And I actually found out that her 
her like tour assistant got fired the next week. And I had a slight bit of satisfaction about that because this was a really nasty, nasty person and took out some things on me that were not my fault. Um, it was interesting. It was it, see everybody had a different idea about like who was who in the pecking order, mm -hmm. and you know who Madonna wanted in her dressing room and who she didn't. So so I, I was given conflicting instructions about who was to at what time, and so anyway, it was it was trying. It was, it, um, but you know, nothing personal between me and Madge. You know, everything was fine with us. But uh, um, yeah. Wow. Madge, but uh, but then yes, one of the one of the bizarre apexes of my security career was being placed on stage. I mean, off stage, you know, off out of public view behind a scrim uh, at the share show, and my job was standing guard or sitting guard. Um, the little booth, refrigerated booth because it contained her little fur pieces and things, and they wilt if they're not a certain cold temperature. Oh. And, you know, th this, was, this, this was when, you know, Cher would finish a song and leave the stage, and the boy dancers would vamp for a while and, you know, do some numbers, and she'd come out, you know, 30 seconds later, she'd be out there in a completely different costume. This involved a lot of Velcro, copious amounts of Velcro. So I would see Cher, and they would say, you know, look straight ahead. You were not to look at Cher. But I was gifted with considerable peripheral vision. So, you know, like, you know so out of the corner of my eye, I'd see Cher in progressive stages of undress as assistants were ripping the Velcro off her. You could hear it. And she'd disappear in the booth. And and she'd come out with some amazing feathered or furred tiara. And so that was the gig. I did it flawlessly. No, no furs disappeared. So, you need a standing ovation for that one, Gary. Yeah, well, well, Cher, Cher took all the bows, of course, as well she should. Unfortunately, we did not exchange information after the show, so I can't pass along your desire to have Cher. Somebody knows Cher. Somebody, Somebody knows Cher. It's getting closer and cl I feel it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you mentioned Jennifer Aniston, and, and I've had a lot of Jennifer Aniston in my life this week because I binged the morning show, the first season, and the second season just started, so uh, so now I'm caught up. I haven't uh, watched it. I it's, bet really, it's, it's really good. Really, I think really, really good. Cool. She's really cool. Reese Witherspoon is awesome. Um, uh, Billy Crudup plays... Oh. This this really, really, he's not evil, but he's like an incredibly manipulative TV executive, and uh, uh, he's fantastic in it. And it's really interesting because they started making the show when the show was first when they were creating the show. Like Me Too had not blown up yet. Mm. I, I think I think they had already written a full season before the Matt Lauer stuff went down and all that. So they had yeah, to completely re never re happened before that. But. So they totally reinvented the show. Of course, it had happened, but it hadn't blown up in that yeah. genre, in that very area of morning TV at that point. Carl so, said he might have a line on the share thing, and he's going to reach out. Thank you, Carl. Work it, Carl. Work it, Carl. Oh, Michael, Michael B. Pels wants to know if I was packing. I guess that means if I was packing heat to, to protect shares. Um, I think that's uh, what that means. Yeah, I hope so. Were um, you? Uh, no, no, I, I, you know, it was all, I, I, I practice security through mind control. You know, I, I Good vibe, pe I, I vibe people away from shares. You know, I just, I just emitted I an aura. I around when I've been around you. Yeah. I, I'm very, I feel very safe when I'm with you. If, if you, if, if, if you had like feathered hair, you know, feathered headdresses to protect, you, you would. Oh, you would I do. Need, well, then you need I not do. fear. If I'm around, you know, I have no a feather gonna... dress. I have a feather yeah. head thing yeah. that my friend well, MJ gave me. Well, if you Not ever, if you, if you, mine. if you ever, if you ever build a little refrigerated booth for, for, for the, the, uh, for the furs, I'm Sometimes your guy. Sometimes I wish I had one up here in my apartment because in yeah. July I need a refrigerated yeah. booth for my apartment. Yeah. yeah. Everyone should have one. Maybe Tim's Vitalik. Tim, can you do that for me? Build me a booth. I need yeah. a booth. 
Yeah, just just I'll take the share model. Yeah. But anyway, um, the uh, so the morning show is really really good, and they, they and they and they made they made uh, Steve Carell the formerly beloved host who turned out to be the, the oh he's the the, the scumbag Matt yeah flower guy yeah so uh, and he's really amazing you know I mean we all you know Steve Carell's usually been a pretty comic character and he is comic on the show at times but the darkness is really pretty it's anyway it's really good it's really really good so. Uh, Second season just started. There are two episodes into the second season now. We did talk about this. You you watched all of Lillehammer, right? No, I have not. I I I, I that's that's on my. Gary Lambert, are you? I know. Steve, Stephen Van Zant, one of my major heroes and uh, and uh, fashion icons. You know, always wanted to wear. You a have not outfit. watched Lillehammer. You oh. know it. It's. It was one of these periods where I was so immersed in so many shows that when it was on in real time, it went by me, and then now everything is available in non-real time. So I don't. I haven't felt the urgency for it because there've been other things to catch up with. But I'll get there. You know. So good. Yeah. So good. I wish that I had not. I. I'm kind of. You know. I've watched Schitt's Creek three times. Yeah. Yeah. Because the first time I watched it on my iPad. Mm-hmm. The second time I watched it for the for the first time with my mom, right. it was her first time. And I was seeing her, Catherine, in these clothing, in this these get-ups and shoes and t- tights. And I'm like, oh, my God, look at her shoes. Oh, my God, look at his skirt. Oh, my God, mm-hmm. look. At-. And then th- my mom wanted to watch it again. And I went, you know, it's, Why not? it's April of 2020. Might as well yeah. watch it again. Well, you know, the, the four of them, the Rose family, showed up at the Emmy Awards to present. Oh, did they? And they, and they were so wonderful. I mean, uh, Eugene Levy was especially brilliant. He's you know? brilliant. Yeah. He's um, brilliant. Yeah, the, just the banter between them was fa- It was all scripted, but it was fantastic. It was so good. I was somewhere during the Emmys. I was at a gig or something. I was mm-hmm. actually somewhere, and I didn't, I didn't get to... So I don't know what happened, but... Well, it was the it was the big Ted Lasso love fest. It won. Oh right, and I have never seen that. It won most. Of, actually, it, it was kind of a nice division of things because it it won best comedy series. Jason Sudeikis won best actor. The amazing Hannah Waddingham won best supporting actress. Uh, um, Is that incredible? On Hulu? Yeah. No, no, it's on uh, Apple Plus. Oh. And that's where the morning uh, show is also. That's where the morning show is also. Uh, uh, the inc- Brett Goldstein, who plays the the former soccer star Roy Kent, won Best Supporting Actor, and he's just amazing. But they gave they gave the Best Comedy Writing and Directing Award to Hacks, which is also an amazing show. So Hacks. So, so I, I was happy that that, that that. I love Hacks. Yes, and and Jean Smart, absolute she, goddess. Jean did Smart she won win? Best. She won Best Comedy Actress. Yes, so it was it was as as it should be. She was fantastic. Now so there's that, only one season of Hacks. Am I correct on that? So far, they are they are about to go into production on the second one. Good, right. because I'm jonesing for Hacks. I can't I, I can't wait can't can't wait for more Hacks. It's brilliant. So so there's that. Uh, what else happened on, on on the Emmys of note? Um, oh, there was this there was this hilarious running Conan O'Brien joke, where you know Conan just ended his mm-hmm. you know like thirty plus year run. I know. I'm, 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 wa- I'm ready and waiting. Yeah, he, he's now going to have a thing on HBO, but it's not going to be a talk show. It's going to be he's going to do other things on HBO. But he, uh, you know, he was content between late night with Conan O'Brien and then his brief weird experience with the Tonight Show and then his show on TBS. He was on for like thirty years, which is an amazing run. Uh, so this was his last season. He was kind of the sentimental favorite, but he didn't win. But they decided to sort of give him this like crazy. They said Conan can do whatever the hell he wants on the Emmys tonight. <laughs> so there was this progress progression of of Conan moments. Um, when when John Oliver's show won best uh, whatever it is, what do they call it? Variety Talk or something? It's a it's a weird it's a weird kind of mashup category where shows that kind of don't make sense being in the same category mm-hmm. are you know. Um, but John Oliver on there together. John Oliver said these really lovely things about Conan. 
And then they, then they showed Conan sitting at his table sulking, you know, you know, very much for the cameras. And and John Oliver's head writer, like, gave her Emmy to Conan, you know, who's, like, sort of holding it and weeping. Uh, and then and then when uh, they introduced what's always the dullest part of the evening, they introduced the president of the Television Academy yeah. to come out and read some really dull stuff of cue cards. Popcorn. Yeah. Well, it, except this time Conan like gets on his feet and is like screaming at this guy like it's, you know, like like he's at an ACDC show and like saluting him. And so he totally sabotaged the guy's speech, <laughs> uh, you know, but and the audience was the audience was loving it and the guy was loving it. You know, the president, because it, it's the most attention he'll ever get, you know. Uh, and then finally, uh, Stephen Colbert's election night special won best best uh, live special and Colbert and his team go up, you know, it's like all the writers and producers and everybody's so there's like 15 people on stage and Conan got up there with them. <laughs> and he was, he was acting like he was part of the team and he was like making all these really, you know, like over emphatic gestures and going, woo, woo, and hugging people. And, and it turned out Colbert invited him to do that. You know, it was like people at home were saying, Oh, was Conan involved in that show? <laughs> no, he wasn't at all. So, Colbert. That was kind. Of, that was kind of beautiful. It was. It was like. A, it was a sweet thing that they. They're all. That's. I like that they all, are connected. They all. They all like each other. Yeah. yeah. They Which all get along pretty much. Doesn't always happen, but that's really, yeah. how lovely. Oh, I'm so glad that hacks won. Now I feel, I feel so much better. Yeah. But I yeah, I mean, I'm. I thought. I thought Ted Lasso deserved everything it won, and, and hacks is going to be around for a few more seasons. So. Yeah, it will what is more. the premise of Ted Lasso? I don't even. La is it something that I would? Do you think? I mean, it must be great because. Well, I've, it's it's I've, you know it's set, it's centered on soccer in England, but you don't have to be a soccer fan to love it because it's really about about friendship and community and it's a very po it's a very positive show. It's a very inspiring show. Um, uh, it it can be very touching. It can be very. Uh, it goes some dark places, you know, it's like, it's like these are, there's some very flawed people involved, but they're all like trying to improve. Um, but it's, it's centered, what it's centered on is um, this English sort of mediocre English soccer team hires a former American football coach who's never coached soccer. But this, this, this guy like won a, a division two NCAA championship and the owner of the soccer team hires him, but her secret agenda is she wants to destroy the team to, to spite her husband, her ex-husband, because uh, because he he the team is the only thing in life that he loves, and she wants she wants the team to fail just to spite him. But it turns out that Ted Lasso, you know, really becomes this positive force on the team, and they all it's it's really it's really sweet. Grace, nice. really check it out. Yeah, beautifully written. All the acting is great. No, it's I, I. So there's is there Apple TV and Apple TV Plus? They're two different. No, no, no. Apple Apple TV is the hardware. Oh, that's <laughs> you know, Apple the thing TV. you buy, yeah. right? You buy this yeah. thing. Yeah, but you can also watch Apple TV Plus on your computer or or your iPad or whatever. So why do I buy the thing? So I can well, buy no, it on a big TV. Yeah, the Apple TV box is not just for Apple TV. You can have YouTube on it. You can have Hulu. You can have all the streaming services in one place and control it with one remote. And you can also not have cable and subscribe to a lot of these things. You know, you can get these a la carte subscriptions. But we haven't, we don't think that the game show channel is on any of these. Possibly not. I think that's only, that's only carried by cable that's, at this point. That's why we watch. By the way, are you a Jeopardy fan? Are Jeopardy's you been going through. Jeff, some things have been happening on Jeopardy with that with that guy who was going to be host and was executive producer and turned out to be a jerk and left. And that then was he intriguing. Had, but, he, but he did the first week of right. the season, which was right. super awkward. Like, dude, yeah. just go home already. <laughs> right. Well, he wasn't fired yet when he recorded that, when he taped that, and and then and then he got fired. Well, well, then when for, when they had the guest hosts after after Alex died, he did the first week of that. Right. And then they, you know, they made it seem like it was a competition between all those guest hosts, but it really wasn't. You know, it was like they were kind of, they were making up their mind, but I don't think it was based on the performance. You know, it's really funny that, you know, like some of those guest hosts hosted for two weeks and some of them hosted for one week. 
Mm -hmm. but they tape an entire week in one day. Yeah, they do five shows in one yeah. day. So, so, you know, there's no way for anyone to improve in the job. You know, and Alex Trebek wasn't a great host when he started. You know, people don't realize that. I mean, he's, he's totally beloved now. He was but on a show that I used to watch when I was a really young kid, this other Yeah, show. he was on a bunch of shows before, before Jeopardy, yeah. But, but the funny thing is, when Alex Trebek started, it was like, oh, he's no Art Fleming. You know, sorry, Art Fleming was the original host of Jeopardy. Uh, so if Trebek had only hosted for one, you know, for, for five shows, and then they said, no, he doesn't make it, you know, he could have been gone, but that's not the way it worked back then. Yeah, they do five shows in a row, and yeah. the, the, the people, the, the, what's the word? The, the people that are competing, the competitors don't know each other, don't know anything, and all of a sudden... Right. They're all there in the morning, and then the next one, and then the next one. And now this right. guy, Matt, has won, I oh, think, been, yeah. 27 shows. Yeah, he's, he's, shows. he's, he's, uh, and, he's amazing. And it almost just doesn't, like, the last couple of times, Grace and I are like, oh, he's going to. But, because he's not a gambler. So he's not winning right. billions of dollars. He's yeah, doing, like, yeah. two grand. or yeah. And then the other day, he did. He did a true daily double and he lost, he won it, yeah. but he lost yeah. another one before that. And it's just been, it's intense. But he's, he's amazing. The, he's the, the incredible. Breadth, the breadth of his knowledge. Whether yeah. he's just a, has a photographic memory or, but he does, he answers it not the way they want them to oh, answer he's, it. He, he says what's instead yeah. of who is. Or, what's you know. Lambert? And they're like, yeah. yes, what is Gary Lambert? Right. What's right. Lambert? Right. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I think he's fantastic. I yeah, just... no, I, I I like the fact that he kind of has that quirk. You know, it's sort of become the thing that everybody's used to about him now. It's because he's been there so long. Yeah. Oh, I just love it. I'm glad you're watching it too. Yeah. So you had the weekend off, the whole week. Kind of. Well, I actually had a busy week dealing with all the stuff I haven't had time to deal with, and I I did have a one job related thing to do. Uh, but now you know now it's it's definitely. I've had a I've had a less intense week than than uh, the previous several were. Have you had any really great meals this week? Well, so here 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 in here in lies this you know, part of this story. Okay. Um, well, this was a, a couple of days. What was today's the twenty fifth? So on the twenty second, I had a really nice long phone call with one of my longest standing and dearest friends. I think you, Leslie Hunter. You, you, you met Leslie. She 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 she's a fan of yours. Leslie. She came to see us sing and stuff. Um, and uh, Leslie. yeah, and she she's you know she's uh, you know an old East Bay pal, and she grew up in the East Bay and lived in Berkeley for years. And we were just both kind of pining. I mean, I, you know, I don't really pine for living in the East Bay anymore. Strangely enough, she lives a lot closer. She's been working and living in Petaluma for years now. Oh, but, I'm going to be she, I'm going to be at David Dodd's house on Thursday next week. Oh, how cool! How yeah, cool! In Petaluma. Yeah, but so but Leslie lives. She still lives in Northern California, but she never gets to Berkeley or Oakland. You know, and, and she was talking about how all the things she misses, and we talked about mamas, and we talked, so. Um, so that got me in kind of a, a, a yeah. Oakland frame of mind. So tonight, I my dinner or late late lunch or was an attempt, and I'm only going to call it an attempt. I have triumphed with this before, but this was just an attempt at the Mama's Royal Cafe chicken avocado and Jack omelet uh, with the home fries and fruit on the side. And, I need to do that. I need to do that. You made the home fries too. I made the home fries. The omelet was not a triumph. The I did the omelet one time before, and nailed it so incredibly close to the original that I was, you know, it was like I was in some other state. I was in that. I was in, you know, like a Michael Jordan kind of zone. I couldn't miss a shot. Yeah. Tonight was it was more effortful. The avocado wasn't quite where it needed to be. You know how avocados are. You know. Hey, if you They're, plan on having them tomorrow and you miss right. it. Right. Well, today there yeah, this one was a facial out of them. This one was too hard. This one wasn't quite there yet, you know. And uh and the the, the omelet, you know, the the crucial turn turn it over point, it it kind of all fell apart. Still very tasty, you know. 
disappointing only by the measure of my previous effort, which was which was a masterpiece and a, and a miracle. The home fries were very tasty. You know, how, much, it, how much butter do you put in your home fries? Uh, actually, I did the home fries in oil. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I did the I did the omelet and butter, and the home fr- home fries and you know, that that's also kind of the mama's ideal. You want to use like a like a I use peanut oil. They, you know, I can't remember what what kind of oil they use, but uh, um, yeah, you know, the home fries were a little less. They had a little less of a, of that crust on them that that mm-hmm. mama's does. But uh, again, my first effort was more successful in that too. What what tonight did though was like it just humbled me before the genius of the people who do that as their job every day. And how many omelets does mamas make every day? Oh my gosh. Yes. And they're flawless. They're flawless. And they're beautiful. They are. And I'm going to go there while I'm in. Yeah. I'm going to go. Yeah. You know, I'm, I mean, that is an incredible, those line cooks, you know, at that level of production and that level, you know, that ain't fast food. And yet they turn it out with this incredible efficiency and it's, invariably you know just pristine and perfect and visually so satisfying so you know so i i had to i had to give the props i had to wear the shirt tonight you know to to honor the great people of mama's royal cafe have you ever did you ever go to in to in kensington in kensington yes once yeah that was really good in really Kensington good. was this yeah. incredible yes. breakfast and dinner place, but mostly yes. known for their breakfast because they made biscuits that were about as big as this box. Mm-hmm. And you would get two of them on your plate. And you would order, they had two doors. They had a, a, a slight, a, um, what do you call it? Push door that, that you mm-hmm. just walk through. One, they would come out to take your order and the other one they'd go in the back and then they'd come out and it was revolving and you would order me of course would order the most special could i have and then and put the avocado and then and then yeah 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 and you'd order this omelet or whatever they'd take the order in and literally 30 seconds later it was on your i mean it was weird yes. but because are you talking about the one in Albany or the one in oh, the one in Oakland? Oakland, Oakland, Oakland. The one the, in Albany just yeah. The, the one in Oakland, the the one in Oakland is the original. The okay. one in Albany was 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 uh, first created as an annex to the one in Oakland, but then they split off. You know, different owners. Uh, I think there was a divorce involved. Um, and then there's the one in Mill Valley, which was one of the other partners going off and starting one in Mill. But Oakland is. Oakland is it. That's it. Do you remember the restaurant a la carte? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. San Pablo, where we all used to play. Adam and I played there. That's where Rob and I first played. It's now a flower shop. But Uh, I used to live in uh, Richmond Annex. So that uh was good. And then I lived in on Madison Street in Albany. So it was, you know, Jenna doesn't move too far. And when I stick to one area, like from James to I kind of kind of stick close. To to address some. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, well, I just I'm seeing other questions come up, and uh, I What's want, the I want question? to address. Oh, you're uh, making me. I'm tr- I'm really hungry too, and I'm thinking blueberry pancakes. But I was also thinking yes. about homemade cafe when Norm oh, used yeah. to make his um, home fries, and they make this mm-hmm. bowl called Home Fry Heaven. Yeah. He would take yeah. a two pound block mm-hmm. of butter and just put it on the grill. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Or and I'd be sitting there. Yeah, because Corinne, who was on last week, you guys worked at the homemade, and I used to live three doors down, and it was a whole thing. I could go, I could go sign my name, go home and take a shower, come back and eat at the homemade. That, oh, that's beautiful. That my, yeah, I mean I'm the East, the the East Bay. You know, I don't know how many places are still open. You know, which, which are long gone because it's been so long since I've lived there. East Bay was an amazing breakfast mecca. I mean, Betty's Ocean View, uh, okay. Lois the Pie Queen, of course. Um, Anne's Cafe out on Fruitvale. Um, really, yeah, you could you could make breakfast your only meal of the day. In, in, Rick in and Anne's. Day. Rick and Anne's. They're still around, right? They're still there. In fact, yeah. when we were evacuated from my sister's three years ago, we got to her got to my house in Oakland, where I was living at, that night on Sunday night at like eight o'clock, and then the next day, my dad was like, "Let's go out." 
for breakfast brunch and we went there and we were pretty you know like yeah, this yeah, not yeah. knowing if my sister's house was going to be there or not right, and right. and or, and then the server overheard what we were talking about and Anne came over and said do you guys want anything and we yeah. were like um I looked at her I go yeah a mimosa all of a sudden I thought let's have and she brought over a bottle of champagne and orange juice and we partied and sat outside and sang and then when we were done she goes Jen has been coming in here for 30 years and this is heartbreaking and we didn't know brunch is on us so oh. I'm just I love them for that because yeah I mean a lot of a lot of those places their heart had, is yeah, yeah, I mean, Ma Mama's was totally family to me. Lois the Pie Queen, you know, uh, Rip Wilson at Soul Brothers Kitchen, which wasn't so much a breakfast place, but that was, it was that kind of place where you went in there and you, were, you weren't a customer, you were Everybody friends with these people. Everybody knows your name. Yeah. It was, and that's it how was the that, homemade was for me for yeah, generations. That, that, that now they're doing dinners there. Oh, nice. Now, to address, to address Suzanne's question, try Joe's special. I don't know if she met... If she means try Joe's special at Mama's Royal Cafe, or try Joe's special generically any place, or make Joe's special at home. I have made Joe's special at home, and and I make a fine one. What is and, Joe's uh, special? Joe's special is there are vegetarian options, but the classic Joe's special is like ground beef, uh, eggs, and uh, spinach scrambled together, mm. and with like onions and things like that, onions and garlic and. Uh, famous uh, original Joe's. Oh, original Joe's in San Francisco. Okay. I, I think I think I think yeah, invented that's it. That's what she's referring to. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've had the Joe's special at Original Joe's, and then a lot of other restaurants have made their own variations. Have you ever special. been to Joe's in Daly City? I have not. I I know of it, but I've never been to that one. It's like being in. It's like when we used to go to Bruno's. When yeah, Chris, yeah. Who knows? You just walk in, you're like swang to swang, swang. That, that kind of place. Yeah, Joe's right. a daily city, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And there was there was a Marin Joe's, and there there were various shows around. It's still yeah. there, because I rem yeah. I was at a when I was at a, a Lagoon not Laguna Seca but Sonoma Raceway. Mm -hmm. We all went to Joe's and Marin after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna and be in Petaluma or in the city on Thursday. Fantastic. Well, give. Give David Dodd my very best. I will. I will. He's going to Boston, and I'm going to be at their house. Uh -huh. Oh, speaking of Boston, I've I've had two very satisfying. Oh, after, the North Beach shows. Yeah, it's two very satisfying experiences watching my New York Yankees defeat the Boston Red Sox at Fenway Park these last few days. Um, so I'm 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 pretty uh, pretty pleased with that. So I don't I haven't been keeping up. What's happening? How are how are the Giants doing? What's oh, happening? the giant the giant the Giants are about to, about to clinch the division. Okay, Woo! they're definitely okay. they are they just hit they just became the first team to win a hundred games this season, so they have the best record in baseball. Um, the uh, some of the other pennant races, like for the wild card spot, are are very intriguing. The Yan the Yankees just caught up to Boston for the first wild card spot, and they've got one more game against them. And then after that, they've each got six games against other opponents. So it's really going to come down to the wire. Um, so, exciting. but I'm very, very, very happy with the Yankees. I'm sorry, Bill Winokur. I touched a nerve. I mentioned I mentioned the Yankees being the Red Sox. This is a standing um, ovation for both of you. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's that's very kind. Um, well, you know, there, there there is such there's such an intensity to to the Yankees and Red Sox thing. You know, and and the Yankees winning a big game at Fenway Park just as uh, Boston was on a hot streak. The Yankees were terrible for a while. Then the Yankees won 13 straight. Then they lost like seven straight. They've been driving us crazy. They, they, but not, right now they really seem to be hitting their stride at exactly, exactly, exactly the right moment. So it's going to be very interesting this final week. All right, Bill, I'm sending you a hug. Yes. The North Beach Joe's, I used to work at Enrico's for a year. Right. So right. North Beach was right. Or uh, yeah. Joe's was right across the street from there. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. That, that was that was Little Joe's, the one on the, on, on Broadway. That was not affiliated with uh, with Original Joe's. It wasn't? No, Little Joe's was its own. 
Oh, Little Joe's was great. Yeah, Little Joe's was amazing. Little Joe's. I love. I sat at the counter there because the, the watching the cooks was like yeah. totally performance art. They you can they, they all, genie right in front of your face, and, and, and they were they really liked to make the flames jump out of the pans, and and yeah, they were very very flamboyant, and it was it was performative cooking, and they uh, and they sang. You know, I loved I love Little Joe's. Yeah, Little Joe's was fun. I used to yeah. go there because I get I worked at Enrico's, and I'd get tired of. Not tired of eating there, but you know, yeah. if I'm in North Beach, I'm gonna go, go yeah. get some pizza around the at Golden Boy and yeah, you know, run yeah. around and do all yeah, that. little little Joe's, little Joe's and uh, and the I U.S. They were connected. No. Little Joe's and the U.S. restaurant were my. Ooh, my, I loved U.S. restaurant. Yeah, that was fun Great. on the, the corner. Genie, the, yeah, uh, yeah, that little the wedge of Stockton and, and Columbus, and uh, the uh, the waitresses there were incredible geniuses because they never wrote anything down and they never got an order wrong. And when you finish your meal, instead of going to a separate cashier, your waitress would go to the, to the cashier and say, okay, you went the pasta al pesto and the glass of candy and blah, 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 you know, and, and you know, she could have like a table for 12 and she'd remember every person's order. It was incredible. They, they were, they were brilliant. Did you ever, did you go to North beach pizza? Sometimes, yeah. There was a woman that worked at North Beach Pizza, and she was Irish. Uh huh. And she worked there for, you know, in like 1988, she'd already worked there for 20 years. Right. And she, I was turned on to the clam and garlic pizza, mm -hmm. which is just like, if I right. think about it right now. And yeah. I would walk in there three years later, she'd go, You still want your clam and garlic? I'm like, Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. But I love that. Thing. Josephine Cafe Josephine. And, oh. Yeah. Clam, clam and gar clam and garlic is of course I think I think New Haven invented that one. I think Frank I'm Frank sure, Pepe. I believe that. I, I think Frank Pepe's and so of course that's what I got when I was up there. Uh Suzanne, um there there was and I believe still is a Joe's on Chestnut, yes. That is correct. Then the the, the then there is the Jays who are two back. Is that the blue Jays? The Toronto Blue Jays are yes they they were ahead of the Yankees just a couple of days ago they've now lost a couple in a row uh, I think maybe three in a row and the Yankees have won so it's 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 very intriguing the Jays still have a shot at it I think the A's are unfortunately out of it um, they 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 slipped these last few weeks did Notre um, Dame win today I was supposed to go to the um, Michigan game today ah. with my friend Bill Dietrich who's in Facebook jail right now but um I didn't go yeah. That's like a, in, in Ann Arbor. Yeah. That is such I'm a, a massive I'm a Sparty, state. but it's right, you know, right. when someone offers you want to go to the big house to a sure. game, you don't right. usually turn it down because you get to go hang out in Ann Arbor. And I used to go, Nino lived near there, so I used to go to the games quite a bit. But right. I stuck around here where there was an art fair and farmer's market, and I bought some mushrooms and hung out with Grace and hung out with Stacy and I got strawberries. Did you guys see the strawberries that I was gifted tonight? Oh my goodness. They're like this big. Oh god. I... Chocolate dipped strawberries, four Love of them. It. So I had to try them. Oh, so Notre Dame won. That's cool. Are you a college football guy? Not at all. I'm not a football fan at all. You know, I I peek in on games rather than than I can't remember the last time I watched a whole football game, you know, and I I might watch the Super Bowl, might not, you know, <laughs> might sort of let it be in the periphery. Yeah, I've, I've, football's never been my game. You know, uh, baseball, foremost, big basketball fan too. But uh, yeah, don't 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 really feel the football. Yeah. I mean, I loved it when the when the Niners were great. In yeah, the that 80s. was fun. Yeah, I mean, because they they really. They played a different kind of football. It was like it was really it was almost artistic. It was you know Bill Walsh was like this philosopher rather than one of those you know go out there and kill them kind of coaches you know and 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 there was this kind of c cerebral approach to the game that that I you know that got me as close to like really liking football as I ever got. Yeah. That was exciting. Yeah, that was a real that was a great. That time. was a time, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, what's happening with speaking of time? What's happening with Dead and Company? They're going back out. They go back out uh, like second week of October, so they still have a couple, good couple of weeks off. Um, my next big excitement is taking delivery on new laptop. 
on, on Wednesday. Wow. So you may be, I may be making my 1111 appearances on that because it's a little less cumbersome than, you know, th this desktop computer actually lives upstairs most of the time and I, you know, I bring it down. It's been down consistently because I've been doing the live streams on it. But uh, do you have a you must have a desk or a table at the couch? Uh, yeah, I've got like a, I've got a table right here. Um, so you have uh, the laptop set up right there. I mean, I will have, have, the, I, the, I have I have the desktop computer the desktop set up on this there. on this on this table. Yeah. But then when we see you upstairs, are you on a laptop then? No, it's the same one. It's like, okay. you know, I just I had it upstairs for a couple of weeks because there was some stuff that needed to be done down here. So. Um, and I didn't want to haul it back and forth. So, uh, yeah, I'm getting a really, a really nice new laptop. My, my old one is like, just has too many things. It still functions, but it's got too many things wrong with it. You know, it's just, uh, certain, certain essential keys don't work. The, the, some of the ports that you plug things into don't work. The battery doesn't hold a charge anymore. So it's days as a viable laptop. Are. And how long have you had that laptop? Uh, God, I guess it's probably like seven or eight years, maybe. It was a real all work. what you've written on that laptop. My yeah, and it was my. The thing is, having a laptop as your sole computer is probably not the best idea because there's too much wear and tear, you know. So I'll I'll probably still use the desk, desktop machine a lot at home, and uh, and but I have to get a new laptop because we are going to get to the point pretty soon where my work will take me places, you know. So. I will need the portability. Yeah, like you're going to Mexico. Yeah, yeah. So with that in mind and, you know, hopefully a planned trip to California sometime this fall, you know, so, um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm getting one of those really, really, really sweet new uh, MacBook Pros with this brand new chip that Apple just designed that's replacing the Intel chip, and it's supposed to be pretty phenomenal. The performance hmm. is Cool. Yeah, I did a lot of research and, and homework and, you know, picked out what I think is going to be kind of the, I didn't get the very top of the line, most expensive, you know, just loaded with things, but I, it's, it's more than enough for my, my purposes. Well, I know you remember, but I'm just going to say it one more time. You were with me when I bought my first laptop, my first computer. Right. That's right. You said heaven or hell. And that's I said right. heaven. So yeah. we went and bought a Mac. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have never, ever turned away from Mac. Apple can really frustrate me as a company sometimes because they're, you know, they're a, they're a giant corporation and they can do whatever the hell they want. But they, I just love the design of their stuff. I love the, the way, the way, you know, the way the iPhone works with the Mac and the way you know, everything syncs and coordinates is like, People would say, oh, you can do that with a PC. You can, but it, al it always seems so cumbersome. Every time I've used a PC, I said, this the way this thing operates does not make any sense to me. You know, it's not, it's not, it's like counterintuitive. It's counterintuitive. I, I, I yeah. stand around them and I go, oh, no. Yeah, you guys, I really is... want to open this box. Well? I can't till tomorrow. Oh, that's right. That's right. I heard. Yeah. That's kind of like Christmas Eve then. I'm really excited. I know it's sitting here and I'm trying to think of, I'm, I wanted to do a couple, she wanted to do some trivia and I uh -huh. haven't quite gotten my trivia down yet, but, but tomorrow morning, cause Alex is not feeling well, Carla is going to be here okay. and you guys poetry glam tomorrow night. Get your poems out. Anytime you're around Gary and you want to be here, for okay. glam, you're invited. Well, tomorrow night I'll be watching the Tony awards. Oh, yeah. Okay. Which is interesting because it's like, you know, I think what they're giving out Tony Awards for are all the shows that opened before the yeah, pandemic. Before. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how how those shows do. I've been watching places that are opening up musically slowly. And obviously some of them are booked from the year before. And yes, yes. And there are a lot of, when you look at their calendar, because they're so far in advance, because they're just honoring that that year. Yeah. But it's interesting to watch who's playing and who's out. And Right. And then, you know, <laughs> I, guess, I guess in a few months, there'll be the next announcement of, of when Jazz Fest is, you know, who's going to be the lineup for the Jazz Fest and if, it, if it's able to happen in, in its old slot in 2022. Right. 
I was really looking forward to October. I mean, obviously it could oh, have yeah. happened anyway now at this point, yeah, yeah. but based on what has happened, but yeah. Um, yeah, maybe Dead and Company will be there then. I, I, I would think they'd want to honor that one. Yeah, you know, I, I think they were all really looking forward to that. There and may not be a- Maybe Nicks will come too. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think there'll be a Dead and Company tour in progress at that point, but I think they, they'd still want to do it as a one-off, probably. Um, Mickey Hart's getting Planet Drum back together, which I'm really excited about, because I think really? Planet, Drum, Planet Drum's one of the best things he ever did. That's a fun So, uh, yeah. Um, so that's kind of exciting. And uh, what else is exciting? I think I'm getting a booster shot this coming week. Uh, you know. Really? Yeah, I, I, I actually, I, I walked into my local pharmacy today and said, you know, it's all been on the fence. It's been like, okay, the FDA did approve it for 65 and over. Uh, they haven't announced the schedule yet, but my, my local Walgreens just said, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're going to start doing them next week. So. Wow. That's big. Yeah. Yeah. And the couch, has it been, have people been talking about the couch? And you have your show tomorrow. And I have Sirius on my phone now. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow show, tomorrow show will be good. Um, actually, one sad thing about tomorrow, we, we found out today that Bob Matthews died. And Bob Matthews was, you know, he's not like a household name in the music no. business, but he was... He was there at the creation of the Grateful Dead. He was in the jug band with Bobby and, and Jerry. Wow. He, he briefly played bass in the New Riders of the Purple Sage. But the most amazing thing about Bob Matthews is, is that with no experience and no way of availing himself of experience other than just doing it, he basically taught himself to be an audio and recording engineer and wound up producing several of the great Grateful Dead's greatest albums. He, he produced Live Dead, Working Man's Dead, Skull and Roses, Europe 72, you know. So an incredible guy. And yeah, he passed away, uh, I guess, yesterday. I just got the news today, so yeah. Hmm. So we're gonna talk about him some. And then we're also gonna have on this, it's, it's kind of hard to talk to a photographer on a radio show because you don't get to look at the pictures, but we'll post links on the, on the Facebook page. This guy, Adrian Boot, who is this incredible, iconic photographer um like took some of the most crucial pictures of the early days of the punk movement was very involved in reggae spent a lot of time in jamaica got beautiful pictures of bob marley and all the great first generation reggae stars and um he also wound up being the principal photographer of the dead shows in egypt in 1978 wow. so so he's got all the incredible pictures of garcia on a camel you know and and uh you know Bo bobby climbing the pyramids and so so uh, we're going to talk about that and that i'm really looking forward to that because this guy's got some amazing stories to tell so i can't wait you know like. arthur rosado is coming out with his book soon oh great great and he's got some pretty intense stuff of the dead and well, everybody, Joni, George Harrison, yeah, yeah, Bob, Bob ones are mind bending, and Bruce, yeah. and all your, yeah. all your favorites. I, I like the Tonys too. I just, I'm so not plugged into what's been happening on Broadway. No, I'm yeah, not. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I've seen because of what happened. Uh, I, I can't, even, I'm not even 100% sure of what's nominated or whether I saw any of them. Um, because of what went down, you know, I, there were a lot of shows I was about to see when the pandemic hit. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, one thing that's really, that I really was encouraged about was, uh, you know, Steven Spielberg is doing a remake of West Side Story, the movie. Yeah. My guitar player friend, Steve Bissinger from the Charmers uh -huh. did the sound design for it. Oh man. Well, the trailers look incredible. Oh, it's incredible. And I've been out. I've seen some stuff that, yeah, it's awesome. And 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 Stephen yeah. Sondheim, Stephen Sondheim, was on the, uh, Stephen Colbert last week, and he endorsed it with a rave. He said, wow. "I think it's better than the first one. I think it's just incredible." So that's that. You can't beat that. An endorsement from Sondheim. That's why we didn't get to play a couple of times. I'm like, hey, and Steve's like, I'm going to be working on West Side Story. I have to. And he's working on a new, Steven Spielberg has a new movie coming out or that he's going to start 
in June, I think, and mm -hmm. he's going to be on because we were going to do a short tour next summer, but oh okay. well. Yeah, Grace had her booster. Mom, it's been a, a, over a month at this point. She Fantastic. Was, yeah. Yay, Grace. Yeah. Um, oh, and what, what, what else was I thinking? Oh, movies, yeah. Uh, the other thing that I just saw, an absolute, I didn't read it in detail because I don't, I don't like spoilers. I mean, I, I know the story, but there is a new film of Macbeth, Shakespeare's Macbeth, Really? Directed by Joel Cohen of the Cohen Brothers. What? With Denzel Washington as my Oh, brother. and and uh, um, Francis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the New York Times just like came out with an absolute off the hook rave of that. So I can't wait to see that. And there's also there's this movie now uh, that's just a documentary about the history of free jazz. Just opened in New York and it's going to move around the country. Um, cool called fire music and it just opened at film forum here and that's that's probably next on my list of things to say so good i can't Jeremy wait to movies, go to new york i can't wait forward. to meet you in new york and go to oh. where are we gonna go red get? farm anybody red else farm. we're gonna we'll do it it's gonna happen the red, the red farm trip will happen boy rob rob morocco's hockey history is is very impressive Old time hockey is mostly gone. I played hockey, broke my nose, legs, stitched scars in my eyebrows, chipped elbow, and the odd fuck to the face. Was fun. Hockey, hockey is interesting because hockey is a game I don't seek out. But whenever I watch a hockey game, I say, "Why don't I watch this more?" It's really exciting. I mean, it's the fastest moving. You know, the the skill of the skating and the passing and all that is just phenomenal. So, I got to watch more hockey. I was going to be in New York at the end of this month, mm -hmm. but Gay, the woman that I was going with, right. decided to go at the beginning of the month while I'm in mm -hmm. the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. so it's getting closer to happening, and Rolf and I, you know, we didn't get that grant, but right. we're still going to go ahead and, and make the record happen. It will but happen when it one is way or another. Happen. One it way will happen. Another. Lillian's giving me the look, guys. I understand. I know that look. I've never gotten it from Lillian, but I know, I just I I can sense the look. I can. And feel I think the look my TikTok's here. about to get. I got. I have nine fans on TikTok now. Oh, so you're gonna blow up on TikTok? I'm about also. to blow up on TikTok. I'm just warning you. All right. You. All right. That's okay. But I have I have, like eight and twelve year olds living next door to me now. All right. So I'm I'm about. It's about to go down. Okay, Michael is rec recommending Come On, Come On with Joaquin Phoenix. Okay. Come on, come on. Oh, and The Sopranos movie opens in a few days. I know. Oh, The Many I Saints know. of New York. It looks so good. That's I why I kind of wanted good. to go to New York, because I wanted to watch it in New York. That would be great to watch it. Or in Newark, even better. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Gary Lambert. Next Saturday night? Oh, yeah. Night? I've still got a couple weeks off, so, yeah. I will be. He will be. Oh. On 11 11. I'm excited. I like to watch Gary Lambert dance. Just as right mm -hmm. that's what's happening now mm -hmm. and it's it's sunday morning it's it's sunday september 26th thank you julie loose happy sunday everyone happy sunday do you have a letter for me sir um go easy it's late oh for oh, oh for oh for omelet that was not entirely successful oh oh oh, oh for the omelet that might have been Oh, 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 you don't have to go, but I, I, I do, because Lillian Pearl wants to go, oh, oh, outside, so I hope all of you have a, a really great morning and still a great night, so stay safe, stay nice, and Stay healthy, be real twice. And I know that things sometimes go up and down. Oh, 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 oh. I 
hope all of you have oh 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 such great thoughts and never have oh 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 oppressed words and i hope that your heart oh 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 give me one gary i can't think oh for oh, your well, heart i know oh, if oh. i might observe the next time we all go on to 1111 with Jenna together. It'll be October. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Have an October heart. Oh, 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 oh. I love Gary Lambert cause. Oh, 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 oh. He's so smart. Uh oh. <laughs> Love hard, Gary Lambert. And never. Oh, yes. <laughs> Good night, all. Good night, all. Good morning. See you, in see you in October. Oh, 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 oh. Really, really hard. Oh, 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 oh.